All right, guys, welcome. And right before we start, I want to make you a question about how much do you know about birds? Do you like them? I like them much. Let's see this video. Desperate to feed her chicks, she locks onto her target, a fast and agile pigeon. Time to turn on the speed. Tucking in her wings, she shoots towards Earth. Her teardrop-shaped body, the height of aerodynamic design. Within seconds, she has reached her terminal velocity of 200 miles per hour. The force of air would explode her lungs, if not for the baffles in her nostrils. The design is so effective, it is now used in jet engines. Dictating membranes wipe her eyes to clear them of debris and stop them drying out. She prepares for impact, a maneuver requiring split-second timing. Boom! So let's talk about the birds and falcons. I like them much. Um, why did we decide to show you this video about falcons? Well, this is because this is a very typical bird for the Middle East countries. In fact, some of that countries even have the bird falcon on their official flag. In the targeted attack we are going to discuss right now, this cyber espionage attacks, attack actually also comes from the Middle East. So let's begin. How did we start hunting the cyber falcon? By August 2014, we got some comments from friends and people who trust in Kaspersky. They said there were so, some attacks surrounding very specific like media information agencies. They didn't know what it was and what it wasn't. They didn't know details, so they wanted our help. But at the same time, we um, didn't know exactly what it's about. So we just heard something which helped us to lead to the very first malware which we he see here, the MD5, which uh, the compilation date remains to 2011. It was a typical password stealer malware uh, capable to steal uh, information or passwords from email uh, accounts, social networks, and one very important thing, right inside of the code that guys included URLs of the Ministry of Telecommunication and IT, Information Technology of Palestine, Islamic University of Gaza, Jawal Mobile pro uh, Provider. And these guys used that time the uh, C2 server called Liptona.net. That was enough information for, to start the investigation for us. What is Jawal Mobile Provider? Well, the same is to say you like AT&T. Verizon, Telcel, uh, Movistar, MTS, Beeline, whatever. Like, it's a very popular provider. So you can you imagine? So these guys were like on a, a very specific need and they wanted passwords from these particular organizations. So through time, when we identified like, um, in, let's say like particular pieces of, uh, of stuff or indicators from that sample, we were able to collect more samples. And we saw that the very first sample remains to, uh, to 2011, while the other samples are from uh, 2013 and 14. There's something interesting here on the map. You can see uh, the timeline of the file, comp compilation file of the samples through time. 
You can see something very uh, like specific on December th uh, 2013. The number of attacks or the number of samples the bad guys started like compiling just grew up significantly. We know it comes from Arabic places. We know that. But we don't know what did happen exactly in December 2013. But if you, you are an expert in uh, Middle East countries and Middle East politics, probably you can answer this question. Also, there is another interesting point in this. By 2012, that guys just stayed absolutely invisible. No samples at all. They just didn't do anything. In 2011, they had a kind of like scout. So they, see, they just tried, they saw, they confirmed their capabilities like on stage, they can do that. 2012, no activity. 2013, some activity. And then a big peak in 2014 with 59 samples compiled just from the beginning of the year till now. So how, the infection, uh, how did actually the infection work? Uh, basically, the criminals, they are masters. They have like, I would call it like PhD in social engineering. They're really, really, really like, they have real capability, the, the master in social engineering. They used three main vectors to infect people. First one, spear phishing attacks via email. The second, social engineering through a social networks and we're gonna discuss it just like uh, in details a little bit later and the last one building the fake websites but we have a very popular content for people who live in the Middle East so let's talk about it just in details email spear phishing the victims right then uh, when they were selected got some messages like this you see, this is like an original message from uh, executive secret secretary sent uh, to the victim as a document uh, with uh, financial benefits. You see, the time of delivery, March 2000, 2014. Or another email, the media reporter Rana, who's like a top reporter in the Middle East. She's just top, she's just recognized publicly. And the message was like, uh, hi. This is the manager of the lawyer, David, to remind you the meeting to review the pictures and the report, right, in Arabic. So you can see that the attachment which arrives, it was a rare file archive, uh, which contained a different kind of executable file. Sometimes it was a, like a screensaver stuff, sometimes it was an executable, clear executable file, uh, sometimes it was uh, also like auto-execution archive, so when the victim opened the file, they actually were able to see the document. It was not like, I don't know, I don't know, like uh, messages sent by cyber criminals. They were able to visualize the content. Here you can see in Arabic, if you read it, you can see here like private notes, private notes from a secret meeting which took place somewhere in one of the countries between uh, like top politicians. So that was like one of the tricks why people still opened and actually just believed in that. So it was like, okay, I, I'm offering you to see the secret notes from a private meeting of this government. The victim clicked and saw them. They just saw them. And of course, they also got a, this infection. Another examples here in Hebrew, it is not Arabic language. iPhone 6 and our privacy, or what will happen to Israel in 10 years? Well, you know, the region itself, the Middle East, um, when you talk about like what will happen to Israel in 10 years, this is a, actually a tricky question for many of Israel's and the other people who live there too. So, of course, that guys unfortunately opened that and this is how they got infected. This is one of the messages in Hebrew, which um, just also like, went through uh, to the computer, went to the, um, was delivered to the victim's machine as a, like sexual harassment at the Prime Minister of Israel cabinet. So the victim opened the document and of course like, hey, interesting. So like something like um, to, to see. Basically, I got a comment from one of our colleagues who speaks uh, Hebrew language. He said, this is not a native Hebrew. Actually, there are some like mistakes, grammar mistakes, and so on. So that is another um, 
indicator that the attackers, they are not native Hebrew speaking people, but Arabic people, yes, Arabic language, I mean, because the other uh, colleague of mine, he told me that, yes, this is like a very native Arabic language, actually, they used to use like slang, even like very particular expressions from very particular countries, which can lead you like, hey, this uh, is actually a dialect <laughs> from that Arabic country. All right, so uh, maybe you ask yourself, but you should be stupid to make like clicks on the attachments anyway, because even if it says like, okay, I don't know, sexual harassment, whatever, why did they make click? Because of very simple but effective techniques implemented inside of the attachments sent by email. One of them is right to left extension over right, over right trick, which you probably know which is uh, about like a special Unicode character when it's added to the extension and you open the file through the uh, explorer, you will see that the file actually has an extension PDF. So you will believe, yes, it is a PDF file. But you can see in the left corner, the uh, Windows Explorer also says it's a screensaver. But still, it shows like it's a PDF file. If you go, if you use Farm Manager like tools, or you just use the console, you will see like the real name of the file is meet record fdp.acr. But my question to you: Do you use Farm Manager? Yeah, I know you use me too. But you guys, the rest, do you know what is that? Most of people not necessary. You just use your Internet Expo your uh, Windows Explorer just to browse the director directories, and probably you, you will see like, okay, it's a PDF file, so let's open that. But in reality, it's of course it's uh, just a small trick which allows to infect people very easily. Right, another trick. It's as I mentioned before, like to exploit the sensational titles. Another example, the prospect of a new relationship between Sisi and Bashar al-Assad. Uh, you know who is Sisi, right? He's uh, the president of Egypt. And Bashar al-Assad, Syria. So it's like, um, hmm, like the new prospect. Let's see, let's see. The things are like really bad in the Middle East. Or Islamic, st Islamic State in Iraq and Levant. Well, if you live in the country, you will for sure make a click because you'll see like, what? I need to check it. Or, for example, sexual harassment in the prime minister's office or synagogue attack. One important thing about the capability of social engineering of the guys, when they sent this synagogue attack email message, it was right on the same day when that attack actually happened in the real world. I mean, that guys, they, were, they just stopped on top of the news. We follow the news, they just see that, and they immediately react. They just say, okay, there's an explosion in synagogue. Let's send a like, spear efficient message. And people just open that, because they're desperate. They just say, like, wow, what happened? I need more news. So they got infected too. Right. You remember that one of the infection vectors is email. The second one is social media, right? Social networks. Well, uh, what is about? These guys, they don't care about time. They care about quality. What they did, they have developed for, ye for months or maybe even years a trust relationship between the victims and themselves. First, maybe like short messages, exchanges, like basic information. Then like gathering more and more and more like trust until they got invited or accepted as friends. So once they got like uh, accepted as friends, they hold conversations through private chats, sharing data, sending data like files already inside of the private chat. First, you think it's a friend because you've been in touch with him for months or maybe years and nothing happened. And now you're a friend, you're just chatting, you just have like a, maybe some conversation just got like more and more serious and then you got a file, hey, some pictures of me, like this, and then, again, click, infection, got it. Same, you can see here, just another example. They just exploited like many, many tricks. Sometimes they, they hold conversation like um, uh, in terms of politics, sometimes it was about dating. Just 
depending on the, on the profile of the victim, on the target. They just studied the target and they said like, okay, it's worth to spend months because then we're gonna get like very secret files. Another trick, same or similar, they just went and published on the official walls, Facebook walls of public person like Dr. Dr. Salam Fayyad, also like links on his official Facebook wall. What is about here? First, probably this is not the first post they do. That means Dr. Dr. Salam Fayyad, he used to trust to that people. Maybe they in the past they just published some news, something, so like they just um, distracted to the people who are in charge of his wall on Facebook. They, again, they just gained the confidence and then they also published like these links. Apparently, like it doesn't say in the end like it's a, a, an, an executable file, it's just something. So people may click. And this guy, uh, Salam Fayyad, he's the prime minister of Palestine, right? Right. And next example, Benjamin Netanyahu. Sorry, I don't speak Hebrew. But this guy, you know who's him, right? Prime minister of uh, Israel. Same stuff, same technique. You see, just on January 20, enough Harush just posted something also leading to malware. So people who visit that profiles on Facebook of this public person, first, they are like um, politically concerned or interested in politics, in politics of the Middle East, in politics of the country, in politics like whatever. So they're interested. They have like a very specific profile the attackers need to attack. Second, they trust that these profiles, they're just clean, right? They think like, okay, it's clean, so no problem. So they may click. Simple, effective, of course. And the last technique they use to infect people, it's a fake, uh, they just build like fake um, websites, sometimes even like dressing, it's like linkedin, I am dot in, uh, posting like a stuff in the name of Basem Youssef, have you ever heard about this guy? He's very, very, very famous in the Middle East. The guy is from Egypt. He's a comedian. But he's like, like a, I mean, so big. The guy is so big. He's uh, originally from Egypt. He speaks English as like somebody from US. This is why he, he, he even like got a show in, on the daily show with uh, this guy, which is very popular in the US too. So imagine. And also, like, you post something, like, in the name of that guy, people will also make click because there's, like, a small pop-up message. Do you want to see, like, the whole video? Right. So you need to get the plugin of real player. So once again, you make click, blah, 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 blah. Got it. Infected. So uh, how does it work, the infection chain? I mean, the whole, like, procedure. First, uh, there is a small downloader, which once infected the machine, sends to the central of command and control the information, ID, from the hard drive and uh, like uh, the ID itself or from uh, the name of the computer which is registered on the C2. Once the victim is manually inspected by the operator and approved manually, the attackers, they just push another malware which is a, actually a backdoor which is able to, to, to make the screenshots of the screen, to, lead, uh, to take the key login actions, enumerate files on the disk, and then steal the files. And it's able also to steal passwords. Passwords stored in the uh, password storages. One interesting thing, all the procedure is manual. It is not like infection, like massive extraction of the files, no. The, 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 the actor behind this manually takes action. First, let's enumerate the drives. Okay, we have a USB stick, um, fine. We have the hard drive, right. What uh, kind of files we have? Okay, we have like office files, we have pictures, right. Uh, please uh, just upload files like from Excel stuff, okay. And they got the files. The files are being compressed with passwords and then sent to the uh, C2. Then the guys behind this also um, 
try to push another backdoor, which is another de development. Uh, we, uh, the name, actually, the code name of this the, the software is DHA spyware. It does not have anything to do with United States of America, anything. DHA is it's only the name uh, which they assign to, the, to this piece of backdoor because uh, of the nickname of the developer behind it. This is a new, completely like from the scratch uh, development, which is able to additionally to um, to make the audio recording. That means like to 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 make like physical spying on the victims, just like to recording the conversations. And also, it has the builder. Actually, this is a builder like very very similar to Spy Eye builder. I believe this guy, he, he just got inspired on Spy Eye creators. I just say like, wow, what a beautiful, like simple, functional, so let's copy the technique. And of course, it, it has like a new panel. So this is a screenshot of the server where uh, the victims are just like um, collected or registered once the computer is infected. The name of each victim is just like something like A001 or A002 according to like campaigns. And you see like there are some logs already available there and the server also have data like tools and other stuff. All servers, by the way, run on Linux. Uh, and this is how the DHS manager look, looks like inside. This is the central of command and control. Uh, how the attacker, the threat actor, manage the system. It's just like uh, something like um, functional enough to just to steal information, to manage the data, just to, to, to proceed like with the uh, data like stealing and, and so on. So, um, how, let's talk about the campaigns, right? The campaign itself is very interesting. It is not like a one attack with bunches of samples. No. These guys behind this attack, they were able to have like a very, like very good structure in terms of like campaigns, who they want to infect. First, the very first campaign was against the Palestine, Egypt, Jordan, and Gulf states. The second campaign, maybe you remember the messages in Hebrew language, it was against Israel, but exclusively, I mean, like a dedicated campaign. And the third campaign is Egypt. So if we see the map here, you can see that uh, it be began officially like by December of 2011, and then the very first campaign uh, appeared by March of 2013. So then the guys, even they moved one month later, they just launched another module, which is FPU uh, update.info, which is a mobile campaign we are going to discuss just in a few minutes. And then the, the third campaign appears by uh, the middle of four, uh, 2014. Right, so mobile infections, right? Because till now we have seen only infections on Windows. This is uh, also a screenshot from the Central of Command and Control of the mobile uh, group who is in charge of like mobile infections. What kind of devices do they infect? Android only. They collect, you see like, you see like device ID, Samsung, Sony, Lenovo, email, email of the device. They also collect uh, SMS messages and calls. All this data is available on the C2. They also collect geolocation information of each victim. Who are the victims? Let's see the map. The main focus, the main target of all these campaigns, three campaigns, is Palestine. There are more than 1,500 victims, like different kind of institution. You see, uh, there are some activists, public activists, educational institution, financial institution. Um, we have uh, uh, stocks, we have uh, trade and commerce, we have even like religious organization. Same for, we can say, for Egypt in, in Israel. We have also victims, this campaign have also victims in countries like, I don't know, Romania, Italy, Portugal, Greece, Cyprus, Belgium. That means like people who reside in the Europe uh, Union. Ask me why, I don't know. We were not able to identify who they are exactly. But one sure thing, they are somehow related to the Islamic stuff. I mean, to Arabic language, to the culture, to the politics. Probably they just live in that country. But uh, this is like, uh, you see the interest of the people behind that is like very, very serious. Well, all right. 
So the attribution, who is behind that? Do you know? Let's try to see it together. First, we know that that campaigns were led by people divided in three groups. There are three teams behind each group, each team is behind each particular campaign. The whole team is about like uh, 30 persons. All of them, they just speak Arabic language. We know that the attackers, they are uh, Arabic, native Arabic speaking people because inside of the code, you can see we found like many evidences. And even like on the C2 and the other places, we just points like straightly with the finger to like, okay, that guys, the attackers, they speak Arabic when they eat rice or whatever at home. This is their language. Um, also, we know that the members of that team, they come from Palestine, Egypt, and Turkey. So it's a, like an international team. They are experts in social engineering for the Middle East culture. They're just like, uh, they could give like classes. I mean like PhD, cl PhD classes in, at the University of Social Engineering. What else can we share with you about them? I just want to project you to, to show you what kind of information do they have on their social profiles. This is the first one. I can hack your privacy with only your public information, social websites by social engineering. One guy, one of the very, like, he's one of the most active threat actors behind it. More information. Hacking system is one of my projects that I dream to make since three years. I've done it tonight. Do you recognize the image? It's the DHA's panel, right? So, more. This guy, one of them, he has like, this is his private like uh, YouTube channel. And I was wondering, what is like that videos? Do you want to see them? The first one. This is the translation from Google. See why these Kassam say how to defeat those, that? La la la. Okay, let's see the video. It's not me. <laughs> Another video. Co comment stranger's voice leader Mujahid Ismail Khani. Probably if you're an expert in the Middle East, you will know even who are that guys because they have that like pictures like fans. I don't know. They just say like this is like the leaders they want to follow too, like the idols. Do you know them? I know at least a couple of them. Of these guys? Know them? Yeah, probably some, right? All right, so just like a very, very short resume of our findings. The guys behind this campaign, they were able to steal more than one million, one million secret, completely secret sensitive files from hard drives and also USB sticks. This is a very big number, in only two years. Confidential files. The victims come from more than 50 countries. By the end of 2013, the campaign just go on peak. This is just like live fire launch. These guys, they are very like new. This is a new threat actor. We never seen him, them before behind any other APT stuff. So this is like a new player. We don't know anything about them yet, but now we have this information. They use spear phishing like to infect people and what kind of emails they use? Gmail only. I don't know the reason, but they had like, I can't remember exactly, like four or five accounts on Gmail. They registered like specifically for each uh, victim. Once they infected the machine, they used to um, put the, um, let's say like files, um, just like uh, if it was like cloud, Skype, messenger services and so on and so on. It's the C2, the common and control servers or domain names, used to be registered in com, d, info, and i in uh, domain names. And one important last thing. 
Do you know what is that? It is a, a kind of like administration system of a physical security company which is in charge of securing physical objects. And it has information about the security officers with their shifts, how much they get, do, where do they work, what do they protect. This is also a screenshot of stolen information the guy behind the attack were able to extract from the infected machine. So they also are interested in the physical security of different facilities or places, like uh, maybe some of them like very sensitive in, in a country. So Kaspersky detects us like uh, Trojan Wind 32, Desert Falcons, Basin and some also agents. And this is all from my side. Thank you very much. <laughs>